Carlos is very briefly introduced. Uh, he was born in Belarus in 19. With an example of Egypt, for example, it would be too simplistic, I would argue, to assume that this new civil society emerged, or this new public sphere emerged, simply because of new tools like Facebook or Twitter, right? And here you really need to understand, you know, to what extent the labor movement in Egypt that was trying to ask for better working conditions in, you know, Egyptian factories, or the human rights movement, or the activist lawyers, or the women's movement, to what extent all of them played a role that may have been enhanced by the internet, but it may have actually been more significant than the role of the internet and these new platforms uh, themselves. The future or the present or the past of facial recognition technology. I know how it works, I know the context, and one of the advantages of the instrumental approach is that it just treats the internet or Facebook or social media as a sixth factor, and you don't have to go and study how different regulatory approaches shape the way in which the internet is experienced by the Chinese users or Egyptian users or Russian users. And I would argue that in every country the internet is experienced differently because of the intermediaries, uh, that is internet companies that mediate it, but also because of different censorship apparatuses in each country, different surveillance apparatuses. So, you know, a Chinese user experiences the internet differently from the Russian user and from the Egyptian user. And the question is, well, should we bring in such phenomenological approaches to this at all, or whether we should just treat the internet as something stable that is the same everywhere and then just use it, uh, you know, to explain sort of what's happening out there in the social uh, world, or whether we should actually try to study the interaction between the two and have a more sophisticated uh, type of approaches. Um, so, so sure, and, and as sure. you pointed out, I, mean, I agree with you that sure. right now, for most people, the internet and the way it's used in the media, it's not just TCP/IP protocol used to, you know, uh, exchange packets in your browser. Uh, no, now for most people, it's a collection of practices, platforms. It's chatting, but it's also Facebook, but it's also Skype, but it's also, uh, you know, Silicon Valley. It's also Wikipedia. It's a very huge collection of artifacts, practices, and platforms, and we label it the internet, but the contents of that label change every day. We introduce new practices, we introduce new platforms, we introduce new actors, and the problem is that once you arrive at this essentialist view of the internet as being good or evil, you no longer pay attention to the contents of your package. <laughs> you have the label, and say it's internet good or bad, but you then don't really pay much attention to facial recognition technology or to search engines or to social networks or, you know, you name it, in part because you already know the answer. You know that the internet is good. You know that the internet is bad. And what's in the content, what's in the package doesn't actually matter. I think it's a very unhealthy uh, way to go about it. I think we have to destroy the matter, let, uh, label if you wish, and start engaging with individual technologies. Metaphysical ontological stasis of this notion of public. Um, I mean, what you're referring to in in that field where you say this is a set that's in 